Welcome to this tech tip from M2 Technologies where we'll show how colors can be used to quickly identify important toolpath details in the CAM model. We have a typical 3D model with which combines 3D milling as well as 2.5D machining and as a result there's a wide range of toolpath on this part. If we look at the part, initially the toolpath looks like a, quite a lot of motion and sometimes hard to differentiate between different items other than tool colors. So notice for example to just pick one of the pieces out at random, the rest roughing. Notice that the rest roughing is a purple color where other tool path the previous roughing is a yellow color. Those colors are assigned at the tool dialog on the more tab. You can assign colors to tools so that you can both visually see them on the screen as well as when we're in simulator and see tools remove material the areas where the tool has have been working is colored in the same color as the tool. But let's look a little bit deeper at some of the other things that we can do with colors in the software. In this particular case here, when we go to the File menu and choose Colors, notice that we can control colors for the background. So we see on my system a default color scheme where the background graduates from a white color down to a gray color. You can change the background color to any color you wish and you do not have to use graduation if you don't want to. Notice that rapids, high feeds, and leads, the repositional moves, are all set to what we call parent color. This means that those take on the same color as the toolpath, and it can make it difficult to differentiate between them. We'll set rapids to be red color, high feeds to be perhaps a dark blue color, and leads to be perhaps a brighter blue color. These are all different color schemes that can be used to differentiate these different types of moves. And so now rapid moves are always shown in red no matter what. And this may help visualize exactly where we have rapid approaches combined with where we have plunge or feed moves versus cutting moves. So notice as I zoom in and just look at this section of toolpath, we can visually identify rapids, leads, and actual cutting moves, which are the toolpath color. Well, if we go a little bit further into the part, and perhaps we turn off the views of some of the, the toolpath that we don't need to see right now, and focus in for this example on the pencil mill that's tracing out different areas of the part. Again, using color schemes, it's very easy to now differentiate between high feed repositional moves and actual cutting moves. Now, it just so happens here that the tool path color that's assigned at the tool happens to match the same color assigned to leads. Let's look at what would happen if we wanted to isolate on tool path. Notice that from configure view, we can ask to remove lead moves, rapid moves, or high feeds. So if I remove all three, we are now looking at only actual on-surface cutting motion. If we go back and add a couple of those on, perhaps the lead moves but not rapids or high feeds, we can see and focus on truly only the areas where the tool pass actually in the process of bringing the tool into the surface or engaged with it. Obviously in most cases we do want to show all the motion, but it's very helpful to be able to toggle control of individual stages of toolpath, and also use the color schemes to help quickly identify what tools are doing. So if we want to change, for example, how the tool approaches or leaves the workpiece, or high, how high above the workpiece the tool retracts between cuts, we know exactly where we need to go into the pencil mill cycle in this case to cause the intent of the toolpath to be reflected in the actual path built.